Welcome to Business Lines State of the Economy podcast where you will find insight analysis and the story behind the numbers Namaskar welcome to the latest episode of State of Economy and we are going to talk about the latest high frequency economic indicators and what are their meaning what kind of implication we can see and to talk all on this uh, we have with us mr devendra kumar pant he is a chief economist with india ratings and research uh, mr pant thank you very much for joining the show thank you thanks for having me first of all when we talk about the three high frequency economic indicators which uh, were released during this weekend one was of course the goods and services tax then we had the core uh, sector number and of course the fiscal deficit number let me begin with the goods and services tax number the collection in the month of october was rupees 1.62 lakh crore and it is the fourth time that uh, when we have exceeded 1.60 lakh crore in the current fiscal this is the second highest number during the current fiscal what kind of message we get from these numbers mr pan you have to to be mindful of these numbers uh when i say the point four like the month monthly growth monthly yoy growth is important but it is not that important so what we have to see judge it how they are panning out and more so the ytd basis year till date basis now there is a issue whether whether you take april number as the march number or april number as the march april number because april number which is otherwise in the government records that is what is collected in collected in the month of march but that doesn't is not part of the deficit calculation so let's keep it as as the april number as the april number so if you look at uh, first six months we have the half yearly number now first six months how does these numbers stack with what has happened in the previous years and how these numbers stack with the what were the assumptions used in the in the in the budget arithmetic and then we have to see how what are the expectation in the coming months how it is or the rest of this fiscal how it is going to pan out now if you look at uh, first half number the growth which was which has peaked in the month of june so first quarter growth was 11.6% which has marginally come down and as of end september it is 11.1% this is higher than or at par one can say at par with what was assumed in the budget having said that what what these indicators and what are the economic realities or ground realities are telling us where this is going to pan out now all of us know the the real gdp growth which was in the first quarter 7.8% it is almost certain that uh, that will be the highest real gdp growth in this fiscal the second third and fourth quarter is going to have the lower gdp growth if you look at uh, the inflation the second quarter cpi will be the highest and post that inflation will cpi will fall but if you look at the wpi the first quarter had the very large uh, deflation somewhere around 2.9% and going forward this deflation is going to convert into an inflationary number and as we all of us know the taxes are collected on the nominal wages so while on the first quarter we had 8% nominal gdp growth chances are that as we move ahead that 8% number is going to increase that may like touch and go with the government estimate of uh, 10 and a half kind of uh, nominal gdp growth now that hap- if that happens the chances are that we are going to see a higher gst collection number or the growth in excess of what was assumed in assumed at the time of budget presentation but but what is happening is is your variation is kind of goods and, and services consumed we are seeing goods and services consumed by people at the upper income bracket they are growing but the t- goods and services consumed by the people at the bottom of the pyramid those growths are not growing and at the same time there are wide interstate variations if you look at the overall gst including the igst settled with the states we had seen 15% growth in the first half but there are many states which are even in the single digit growth so that kind of disparity is there mr pant one thing when we talk about the gst number one particular term which comes in our mind is the consumption demand 
And since yesterday, we are listening a lot about that uh, we have this kind of GST collection. And since this is the first month for the festive four month first festive demand, which is picking up. So can we think that the consumption demand is picking up uh, considering this number? I will be, will, should be more watchful. Because what we had seen even in the past, whether we look at the production numbers of the IAP or whether we, we, we look at the consumption numbers, the, these numbers will do good growth for a couple of months and after that, those growth used to fizzle, it, fizzle out. So yes, if you look at, as I said earlier, people today morning newspapers were showing ultra high or ultra rich costliest household mm-hmm. they, houses, that sale, so which is in excess of 15 crore, there's no no dent on the demand of those, those houses. If you see uh, the first quarter number of affordable housing segment, there the growth, the growth is not there. But if you look at above 1 crore, above 5 crore, you are seeing phenomenal growth. As I said earlier, this consumption is coming back. But the biggest is if inflation remains the way it is, then the sustainability, because all of us should be worried about whether even if we have the 5% or 6% consumption growth, say for example, we have 6% consumption growth, is it stable? Anywhere we have the shocks to the system, whether it's an economy, whether it's a vehicle, whether it is your body, my body, right? If there are shocks to the system, the chances are that the system will crumble one day. So if we have the sustainable 6, 6.5% consumption growth going up and slowly touching seven, seven and a half. I will be more more happy with that kind of growth rather than rather than a fluctuating one quarter showing 10% growth and next quarter 2%. But numbers are numbers, statistics are there. So second half last year had only two and a half percent prior to consumption growth. So they're bound to get bound to get a, a good number, good number in second half this fiscal. Is it sustainable? Unlikely as of now. Now coming to the another high frequency economic indi- indicator, that's the fiscal deficit. And if we take the April August number, uh, it's a thirty six percent of the budget estimate. Of course, it is higher than the corresponding period of last fiscal. But one significant factor is that the capital expenditure is picking up. How do you read this number? Uh, look, Trisha, everyone, whether it's the central government or state government, they have front loaded their capital expense. I don't go and read too much like. Uh, because forthcoming election and all those, but what we had seen in the in the past few years, governments have are front loading their their capex, so that what happens if you if you front load some cap in the beginning, and their projects are small gestation and uh, say six month or seven month nine month kind of kind of projects, you start reaping benefit of that in the same fiscal year. Whereas the economic benefits, some of them are if they are they, there's some revenue generation. Say for example, you have the road, but road only always takes around around three years from the award, but the smaller. So that is it. It looks good, but again, here is, I'm sorry, maybe maybe I'll be sounding too pessimist. Government has a limited capacity to which it can pump prime the economy, especially when we are looking at closer to closer to nine, nine to 10% deficit, because we don't know even when we talk about general government, we don't know how much deficit does municipal corporations have. So we know only central state, so nine nine odd percent deficit, that level in excess of 80, 85 percent. In that situation, the government has a very limited capacity to pump prime the economy for a large, longer, longer duration. Yes, during any time when the, the situations are not good, also to say that when chips are down, private sector is not coming out and, and, and investing, the government is doing. So sooner the bu- demand revise, the private sector is unlikely to start investing across the sectors when the demand stability is there. Until that time, the government has to do the heavy lifting, but government heavy lifting for a long duration is unlikely. Yeah, if you look at the fiscal number, just try to compare April, July and April, August. In one month, situation has totally changed. And it happened, it happened for one and that is the corporate tax. Because when you start corporate tax and look at YTD monthly number, we have started with a big negative number. And that growth slowly, negative growth slowly came down. Now, if you look at July, very interesting number and compare with the August. So July last year also, this year also was very low compared to what happened in the previous years. But what happened 
if you look at july last year in july last year your corporate tax collection was somewhere around 70% lower than the average for the april to july and if you look at august this year corporate tax collections were more than 40% higher than the average for average monthly for april to july so that's why if we look at monthly number we are bound to get these kind of aberration or or shocks or the fluctuations in the number so yeah you are rightly rightly started with with april august number that's a better way to to look at it the big question now is that since uh, we have the six month number for the gst six month number for the direct tax collection if we take the second installment of advanced tax and of course uh, we have some idea about that what kind of expen- expenditure trend is there do you see that we will be able to achieve the fiscal deficit target as projected in the budget we should also keep in mind that the borrowing for the second half has not been changed it has been restrained ac- according to the budget plan considering all those do you think that we will be able to achieve the fiscal deficit target as projected in the budget you see in this again the, the the so to say the choker in the pack is what is going to happen to this investment right now the way things are shaping up and uh, more than uh, say we have five months number we know how the trend is going to be most likely the revenue growth is going to be higher in in months to come compared to what it was in the previous months there will be touch and go there will be touch and go and could that we have started seeing some points in the corporate tax and the income tax also because both these heads were were lagging in in numbers till till july if there is not a very big dent on disinvestment we may see that uh, government may adhere to it because there is one magic wand which has government has and because our, our budgets are on the cash basis now whether if you pay on 31st march that is counted in this fiscal if you pay on 1st april 2024 that will be the expenditure in fy25 but looking at what has happened in the past i think government will try its best to to adhere to adhere to that 5.9% number whether that that requires some kind of revenue expenditure compression we may see again in in december and january those circulars coming in the government's uh, departments expenditure those who has has it spent in in 6 8 months 6 7 months their expenditure being curtailed or they cannot spend more than x percent during last quarter we believe it will be it will be so so if you had you asked me this a month back on 2nd of september right based on the numbers till april july there was not that much confidence that they will achieve 5.9 but looking at the numbers which had come april august it gives a confidence that they will be able to achieve 5.9 Okay, and we also know that there is a cash management plan. This says that we cannot have thirty-three percent during the fourth quarter and fifteen percent in the month of March. So that uh, condition is already there. So that is giving some kind of room to the government to follow uh, the expenditure cut for various uh, ministries. My final question to you: That now the big number people will look for is the retail inflation number. Considering the uneven movement of monsoon, lower sowing. and also the international price movement what kind of inflation number for the month of september we should look for so should we are looking at our estimate is 5.9% now here the oil is very tricky because it will all depend on how much government allows or how much is transmitted to the system right we had seen since uh, prices were high government reduced some kind of excise duty post that uh, there is a freeze on oil prices from a long time retail prices what uh, you and i are paying or consumers are paying but at the same time during this period uh, the crude prices had have come down again they are going up so say for example first fiscal of first quarter of last fiscal public sector oil companies incurred a loss but if you look at th- uh, second third and fourth quarter and even first quarter of this fiscal they have generated a profit report suggests that now oil companies are again incurring a loss again going back to my earlier uh, response like any shocks to the system is is generally make system collapse if they are prices allowed to pass on then we can see overall basis for the entire fiscal the retail inflation may go up 
closer to around 30 basis point. But if it is, we have the 50% pass through, 50% either government or oil company, oil company absorb, and when the prices are lower, they are allowed to fund those losses, and then the retail inflation may increase by maybe around around 10, 10 or basis point in entire fiscal. Yes, you, you risk, which I'm looking more from the inflation point of view from a longer tenor, longer period, is our serials inflation. And if you look at serials inflation in, in CPI, that has remained in double digit from a long. So what does that mean? It doesn't mean that much to people like us, but for those people who, again, at the bottom of the pyramid and those who have a larger proportion of their expenditure, is on food, they experience a higher inflation. And then it goes back to the system and affect consumption demand. That goes back and affect system to the to the interest rate in the economy. So yes, inflation is was, is, and will always remain this number one. So yeah, 5.9 for 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 the number our estimate uh, for the number which is going to come on 12th of October. It will gradually come down. It is going to remain in excess of 5% even in the March 2024. Thank you, Mr. Pan, for talking to us. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you.